In this video, Spencer, my younger brother, is going to be harvesting his first crop. For the past three years, he's been helping me with labor. And this spring, he actually got the opportunity to purchase his first farm at auction and then went and planted his first crop one month later. Let's get into it. Had to give you guys some background. Okay, welcome back to the channel, guys. We're getting the combine. Where's it at? Load up to head to Spencer's right now. So Nate, uh, the sprayer guy, is hauling the combine and uh, Nate's hauling the combine for us and they're gonna get it loaded up. And I had uh, two little helper, three little helpers here helping me move the bean head around this morning too, to get her loaded up. So we're gonna get her hauled up about 90 miles north. So we had these guys helping me. What are the names? Lucas. Lucas and Noah and Nick. Nick. Do you think he screws it up? Do you think he screws this up? You have trust in Nate here. Yeah. Okay, we'll see. I would have more trust in my grandpa. Your grandpa than Nate. Nate? Luckily, the combine's pretty small. We can get down to 12.6 is the height of the combine, but then you got a foot there or two feet there on the trailer, so we'll see how tall it ends up being. Okay, we got her loaded and we're in route. We had one route picked out and then I was like, ah, I should double check with somebody. So I called Mark, John Deere dealer. They haul a bunch of combines this route we're going. He's like, don't take that route. There's a bridge that's like a 13 foot bridge. You're gonna get caught at it. So I think we got a route picked out, but that would have been kind of sketchy if we walked up to that bridge and like, yeah, we got to back up and turn around here. So we got her here. We're just gonna load on the gravel road because we don't have amazing spot to turn in. Gary, our neighbor that we're uh, combined for, um, just 35 acres, 40 acres worth. We just parked our wagons and header there when we brought it yesterday. Um, so that works pretty good. You have to give a quick plug to American Farming. This is a mobile game that me and my team have built over the past three years. Got brands like Case IH, Versatile, Landall, Unverfirth, a bunch more, and it's all American focused. If you're interested in farming games, definitely check it out, guys. How are the cones? Cones were good. How, how was the haul, you think? Great, easy. Yeah, I thought it was pretty simple too. No problems whatsoever. Power lines and bridges, you cleared perfectly. Yeah, plenty of clearance, and, uh, no problems at all. So the, the whole combine is, the back end is towards the north, or the south side right there. Yep, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. You just, yep, there you go. All right, big tires are coming down now. Big tires are coming down. Your back tires are in a better spot than they were. Yep, just keep walking those back tires. So the combine, yep, there you go. Walks are doing this. Uh, push, yep, it's gonna push you forward here, just fight it. That's right, we're good, we're good. Just the blocks, so that. Okay, I got Spencer's military truck all hooked up for him in the wagon. I'm gonna hop in the combine here and get started. We gotta put these snouts down quick. But uh, we're gonna get rolling. We're gonna get rolling here. I'm gonna first, I'm gonna combine the farm I just bought. And I've never done anything on it, honestly, besides walk it. So it's gonna be interesting. I do need to give a shout out to old rental man Buck because he converted the 1969 military truck wiring to work with a seven pin plug, which worked perfect. So shout out to Buck. So we're gonna take this thing out to the gravity wagon, hook it up to it, plug it in, and we're gonna see whether or not we have life. If we do, like I said, I'm, I'm just thankful that we got it done. Let's go try it out. It's hooked up. No! It's on! No! <laughs> it's working! It's working! It's working! <laughs> Your brakes are the hazards. 
Basically, our turn signals, hazard lights, and brake lights are all the turn signals. We could tell Grant bought a new, Grant, Grant ended up buying a new header trailer yesterday. And we already blew the tire out trying to go from the, the, the farm back to the, the shed. I don't know. Yeah, bought a new header trailer because the other one, the other one is sketchy and stuff, but the tire's a tire, we'll get a new one. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna run into town, which is like literally two miles that way. See if we can't either get a new tire or if we have to, we have to run back to the shed and pull the spare off the camper tire. Never a dull moment, I kid you not. Here comes the cavalry. We are on the move. Okay, the logistics here are gonna be a little weird. I'm gonna leave this military truck here. I gotta open up this field enough for us to load with a grain cart. And Spencer's got about 45, 50 acres. And then we're gonna open it up enough, take one wagon load in for Spencer's stuff. And then, uh, and then I'm gonna start on Gary's stuff. Gary was the uh, farmer that, that sold me that piece over there. And it makes sense for him to sell it and for me to buy it is because the only way to get out of there really was a really, really old bridge that wasn't the safest. Like it's, it, you can take a grain cart across it, it's sketchy, or the best way is just to come through Spencer's property. And so we're gonna combine the farms together, uh, me and Spencer, clear the fence row and just farm it as one. So. That worked good. Let's did some dirt work here. So we got a ramp out of here and onto the bridge. It's super nice for pulling wagons out of here. So this is gonna work super good. And then Gary's gonna run the uh, grain cart. So we're gonna have a grain cart. So Spencer's gonna run wagons. Gary's gonna run the grain cart and then I'm gonna be combining and this should work good. I think you'll think it's probably two days to get your Gary's stuff done. And then Spencer's, I don't know, another two days probably. We won't be able to get it all done in one day. So in here now, we're gonna go to Spencer. Spencer's in here. We're gonna go to his farm, he calls it. And then we're gonna go to, well, I'm gonna keep it all on one field. I could probably switch fields, but I'm gonna keep them all on one field. I'm gonna call it the 30 acre field. And we'll keep all the harvest data on there. And there we go. Uh, hopefully no booms after transporting her. Ready to go. See this? Concave clearance is way too uh, high. We're not getting down there. We're throwing all of Spencer's corn out the back of the combine right now. Our uh, concave clearance is way too high here versus the other hybrids we're harvesting. There's a lot of cobs that are unthreshed, and then there's a lot of corn coming out the back of the combine too. So I'll check some things out. It must just be a different hybrid, or maybe a setting got changed when we transported this. But there is a ton of corn. I mean, look at look at that right there. On this hybrid, the kernels are a lot smaller, I noticed too, so um, maybe turn down the fan a little bit. I'm gonna open her up a lot more though. I should have a rule on is don't set a combine on end rows. I was kind of, we got into some very small kernels, end rows corn, and I was like, it's throwing corn everywhere, but then once we got to the good corn, it wasn't throwing corn everywhere, and I, we made a couple different adjustments there. Two or three or four passes along. Yeah. Yeah, you got some uh, good corn here. You got into the, like 270s and oh, stuff. Nice. So you'll get some good corn out there. If it's only 20,000, that's fine. Okay, yeah. We'll have Gary auger the next load to you. Yeah, and I'm just gonna sit right here. Okay. All right, I just got back with the first load. We filled the wagon like half full. Just, we filled it up with the end rows here so I can get turned around in this little corner. And then two strips uh, on the 30 acres up and down on the end rows. So we can, uh, so we can run the grain cart without hitting trees and not near the creek or anything like that. This is basically gonna be our runway here for Gary to grain cart through Spencer's farm. We took off the 12 rows and then we're gonna go do Gary's now. And uh, we got, this is what I've been dealing with all season is uh, at least one or two of the stock rolls on one of the rows is going out. It's just not ripping the corn stalks down compared to all the other rows. All the other rows you can see them, the, the stock rolls just ripping that corn down. And uh, on one of the rows, it does it. We get into a big, healthy, thick plant. It tends to clog. Then I got to reverse the head out of there. And I'm going to probably ruin something on the combine with how much reversing I have to do. So when you get into some drier corn and a little weaker stock, it doesn't do it as bad. Um, so we're going to see. We're going to see what happens here. But something 
we probably should have just let that in replace. Here's the fence line between Spencer's farm and uh, technically my new farm now. First time we got equipment on it. We are rolling with Gary. He's got his 4640 and then a uh, 650 bushel cart there. It's working good. Okay, Gary's headed out. Got a full load. Having a grain cart <laughs> is... Oh man, I'm gonna want a grain cart after this. That is nice. And we got the last six rows for Gary here. There we go. She is done. So now we're heading to Spencer's and I think the game plan is I talked to Gary. Gary's gonna let us use his cart, which is actually gonna work really good. And he's gonna run the cart for today and then I think I don't know, maybe me or my dad will run the cart tomorrow and Monday because I think it's going to take us a while to get this harvested here. But uh, but yeah, that's going to be super nice actually having a grain cart on this farm here. And Spencer's going to be running the combine for all of his acres. And I'll just be running the truck or grain cart, one of those two. So uh, this is going to work super good. I'm just super grateful that Gary let us custom harvest that because now we have all the yield data and that works great. And it was just fun harvesting. It was just super fun harvesting along with the previous owner and stuff as we finish up uh, his crop here. So that was just, it was a really cool opportunity. All right, we are on the far east next to the railroad tracks here and we're getting off the end row so there's corn that's that's actually not shielded and then the buzzing noise gonna be the straw chopper it wasn't it's it's usually buzzing all the time so honestly right now it's right now it's kind of nice it's not buzzing like crazy all right I officially opened the field up completely now we're off all end rows we're getting away from the trees and then we think we dialed in the yield monitor just about perfect we'll double check that on what the the weight what the scale ticket says So we decided, we were thinking about taking that row apart. It's not the row that I just undid, but we're thinking we'll just kind of grind through it, keep an eye on it. And I've been keeping such an eye on it that I miss that other row that hasn't clogged all day. So, but load yields up to 230. So things are yielding better. So that buzzing noise is the straw chopper warning alert going off. That's what this is right here. This. This pulley system drives the back of the straw chopper. It kind of like shreds all the stuff that comes out the back. Anyway, there's a sensor uh, uh, in this cover here, behind this cover, and it's sensing the bearing going around and around. So if that bearing were to go out and it wasn't spinning anymore, the sensor senses it and it says, hey, stop before you plug up the back and damage more stuff. So we swapped out the sensor. That wasn't the issue. We chased up some of the wires, that wasn't an issue, and I've been reading more forums and found one that I hadn't read before because this issue has been going on all of corn harvest. And Grant's been combining the whole time. I don't know how he lives with it. He said he just put in the AirPods and turned up the music, but I'm getting annoyed of it. And when you're harvesting a different crop or something, I don't think, <clears throat> I don't think you want the straw chopper. And so some people don't want that buzzer going off when they're going the whole time. So I think there's a built-in bypass and we could have saved Grant like three days, four days worth of headache. So I unplug this guy, then just plug this in. This totally makes sense. And I think this totally makes sense. I don't know why. I just didn't see it on a forum before, or I didn't find that there's a bypass thing. So. All right, it's not beeping anymore. The whole time in here is just beeping. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna fill the grain cart and then be done for the night.
So, one, two, three, this one. These corn rolls are pretty worn down. I can't really see too much that's gone wrong with them. They're not sharp at all. That could be it. These are just we worn just down like crazy. Just grind it, get it to a point. Yeah, I think so. It pinches. Uh, I was talking to Andy, Andy, um, our seed dealer. He said you can't, you can't grind these and rebuild them. Like special shops have to do it. He was like, because, and he's a good like welder and stuff with with equipment. He's like special shops got to do this stuff. But yeah, they're just worn down like crazy. Why is that? Because it has to be hardened metal. I think this is like made of something really special okay. or something like that. This Coronet was probably one of my worst purchases. I passed one up at auction that was a little bit cheaper than this. Shouldn't have passed it up. And then went and bought this one, like $1,000, $2,000 more. And it was used pretty good. This is a uh, Clarion Nicolette kind of mixed soil that we're on right now. So it should produce a pretty good crop here. And uh, so it's just got a low point through here. This farm uh, definitely has some side hill seep that we're planning to try and tile out here. I don't know about this fall. I'd love to do it this fall, love to. But with American farming coming out, I don't know, we'll see. It's producing some really nice ears though. I am, uh, I'm liking this. Big kernels on them too. Spence is gonna need speed and momentum. On second thought, we probably shouldn't pull this full wagon up that crack, but uh All right, we are starting 10 acres left. It is 2.15. We should, uh, should be able to get this just fine here. So I'm just on the far, far west side here, the longest row of the farm. I gotta measure it and see how long it is, but uh, yielding, yielding pretty good. Um, I actually think the, I'm pretty convinced the CRP did, uh, didn't did help anything. And I don't know if it's necessarily the CRP or it could be the process I took it out of CRP, uh, making multiple disc pass, passes with the disc, so. But right now, yes, the CRP did do a, um, did decrease the yield. So stuff that was farmed prior yielded better than stuff that was not. So I've just been hauling for Spencer all day, but we got this guy, Ty the farm guy. He stopped me at the co-op and his dad's in front of us. Okay, what's the new mobile game that's gonna come out? America Farming. Yes, nice, nice. All right, it looks like we got a visitor. A hitchhiker. All right, we're gonna make some adjustments real quick to the combine. Seems like a bit too much is coming out the back, and then uh, we got low fuel, so we're gonna top it off. Grant picked up a hitchhiker at the co-op. Tyler, he's in third grade. 
He's uh, picking up all the ears that I, I, I miss when I combine. The last corn stalks for 2023. Okay, so we just finished harvesting last night. Spencer finished up and we got the combine all blown off and we're gonna actually take it into uh, John Deere Van Wall and then they're gonna run through this combine uh, this winter or this spring or something. But it's gonna work super nice because I can put the combine under storage, keep it in this area instead of trucking it back. And so uh, it'll allow me to give it some time, get a kind of game plan of what's gonna happen next year, stuff like that. So that is gonna work out super good. How was harvest? what did you think of your first harvest? If you said in the springtime that it was gonna yield 215, and I still don't have the exact number, I think it's somewhere around 215, but if you said in the springtime that the farm was gonna yield, this field was gonna yield 215, I'd be super happy and stuff. But then obviously you sit in the combine with Grant's 80 acres that did 270, it's like, oh dang, uh, that's doing really good and stuff. And when we come out here over the summer and coming up to the fall, looking at ear size and all that, you're like, oh wow, this could do, you know, 250. So. But there's so many uh, tree edge effects and stuff like that through the field consistently, probably 235, 240. I'll have to uh, double check that. But yeah, super happy. I literally can't complain. Um, it would be nice if the combine was running good. Maybe we left some yield there because we run the head speed really fast. Some cobs were jumping out. Maybe the combine isn't fully running up to its, you know, having the combine totally full. So I don't know maybe a little too much out the back too it was just kind of not everything was perfect which it's not going to be the first year is kind of what i'm what i'm thinking so stuff to do probably better next year and i got a new drone today which is fun to play with the original drone we had was five years old so came a couple days late but at least we're using it today so Sp i know spence is going to have uh, all of his stuff he's going to go into probably numbers more in depth than i always do on his youtube channel if you guys want to check that out they will have a whole video on this harvest and stuff So I think we got like eight or 10 miles to go from the dealership. It's funny because this area here, there's a dealership about, we'll call it eight miles away to the south. There's a dealership about eight miles away to the northwest. And then there's a dealership about 12 miles away to the northeast. So you're kind of, it's, it's perfect. You're kind of in a perfect range of uh, dealership. I honestly feel like a lazy pile of crap by having the dealership clean this up, but me and Spence don't have water around here or a power washer or anything. And it was like 200 bucks for them to clean it up or 300 bucks extra for them to clean it up. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll do it. But I'm too young to be paying somebody else to clean my combine. It feels lazy and it feels horrible, but we are gonna do it this year. A couple guys still fishing up some corn. Rolling on some corn. There's the neighbor getting started on some tillage. Okay. This is a resting place. I think eventually they'll put it inside under storage and that's gonna be super nice to have it undercover over the winter. If you guys are interested, Spencer actually does a great job breaking down the numbers behind his specific field and how much it earned this year or how much it lost this year. Um, he has it in a separate YouTube channel and then he has a bunch more videos on like the planting, the harvesting, a bunch of random jobs, cleanup jobs he does. And I totally forgot to record an outro, so thanks for watching, guys. Next video is going to be kind of an update on the farm and where things are going because a lot of things are changing in a good way. So I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.